Welcome to Fighting Tiger Basketball, right here. Black quarterfinal action on the campus of Texas Southern University, the HBP Arena. The Alabama State Hornets come into this contest as the eighth seed as they take on the home team, the Fighting Tigers of Texas Southern University. Nick Strong alongside Akeel Williams, Marcus Smith on the sidelines. Akeel, go hard or go home, and it's the Tigers all over the Alabama State Hornets this year. But all the Alabama Hornets have to do one time tonight is win, and they move on to the Toyota Center Friday. Like you said, it's just one game. All it takes is one win and go home. No matter what seeds you are, like we talked about the last game, no matter what seeds you are, teams, you got to start to a fast start. Tigers starting five, Zach Lofton, Kevin Scott, Jalen McLeod, Marvin Jones, Demontre Jefferson, player of the game, honors last game, 22 points. Five for five from the free throw field. Five assists. Here's McLeod into the lane with the step back. Marvin Jones grabbing the board and grabbing a slam. That's you want to see big man Marvin Jones, a.k.a. Stretch, getting up there with the second chance point, putting him back with the nasty put back dunk. Rodney Simeon, Torloaf Thomas, Terrence LaFleur, Amir Warnock. And Corvon Butler, the starting five for the Alabama State Hornets. Eight and 22 overall, six and 12 in SWAC play. They actually tied with Pine Bluff, but they won the tiebreaker. And Corvon Butler scores the Alabama State Hornets' first basket of the contest. Keys to victory coming up. Keys to victory coming up here for the Tigers, Akil. What must they do to take the victory and move on to the Toyota Center? Well, you got to get the corners really. Early foul trouble, apply pressure on the Hornets so they force them to take tough shots as well. Crash the boards. Alabama State is the number two rebounding team in the SWAC, averaging 38 rebounds per game. So they can grab the boards at any given time. Force the Hornets to take tough shots. Ninth in field goal percentage with 39% and ninth and three-point percentage and 29%. And their key player is Trey, Trey Jefferson. Trey Jefferson, remember the first time he against Alabama State, he didn't start. And the second time he did, but only had five points. So look for Trey Jefferson to go off in this game. Trey Jefferson at the free throw line on the season, shooting 70%. Shot five for five from the charity stripe last contest. That was Saturday night versus Southern University. Shot is tipped by Scott. And Trey Jefferson back on the push. We saw Trey Jefferson fly. Had his first dunk of the season Saturday night, Akil. Yo, I told you, I said Trey Jefferson can get up there. He, he's labeled as 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, but the man is only 5'6". And the way he got up in that second half towards the end of the game, hey, I've seen it on YouTube plenty of times. Tigers lead it 3-2 early on here. Tigers led by head coach Mike Davis. The road to the NCAA Finals, March Madness. Here's McLeod for three. Mike Davis has already been to the NCAA Tournament plenty of times. Matter of fact, he's been to the National Championship Contest. Here's a shot from outside by Torlov Thomas. And the Hornets get the offensive rebound. It's Butler. Butler knocks it down from the right angle. Nice shot from Butler. He can knock down that mid-range, so T.S. you got to watch out on Butler on that shot. Trey Jefferson into the lane. We'll talk keys to victory for the Alabama State Hornets right here. Keel, the Hornets, not a bad team this year. They got cooking a little late in the season. How did they get the victory today against the Tigers? Well, they have to body the Tigers. I'll muscle them. Beat the Tigers to the boards and set up second chance points. Utilize the bench. Tony Armstrong last meet had 24 points when they played. So you got to watch out for number 24, Tony Armstrong. When you see Tony Armstrong in the game, watch out for him. And last but not least, keep the momentum on your side. Fast break points, big plays, and key player, Tony Jefferson. In, the last, in these two minutes this regular season, 19 points, 
five rebounds per game he averaged in the two minutes against the Tigers. Kevin Scott to the inside, shoots the teardrop. Just couldn't put it inside the bucket. Six to five, and the Hornets lead it by one. Hornets last game defeated, excuse me, they lost to Jackson State 59 to 65. Leading scorer in that contest was Rodney Simeon with 15. Rodney Simeon, the junior from Miami, Florida. They play basketball down on the beach? Hey, man, look, <laughs> only time I played on the beach in basketball was Venice Beach in LA, and that was beautiful. <laughs> That's the only beach I played on to play basketball. Thomas puts it inside to Warnock, the junior from Atlanta, Georgia. I remember Warnock from the last contest here at Houston. Had a good game. Had a great game. Jefferson looks for Scott, left side to McLeod. Tigers swing it back. Here's Lofton. Buckets. Silky and smooth, and like you say, cold as ice. Ice. All the way from Minneapolis, Minnesota. LaFleur shoots it. Ward knock with the putback. In that first game, Rodney Simeon led all scores, actually led all, all Alabama State scores with 17. Tony Armstrong had 14. The Alabama State Hornets lost that contest by two points, Akil. The Tigers then won game two by 13. Hornets have the Tigers number. Yeah, they do. But you got to remember in that first game, Trey Jefferson didn't start. And Jalen McLeod didn't go off at that point of time in the regular season like he's doing now this past month. So they have, the, they have their number, so to speak. But I think TSU has them, its favor on TSU side since they're at home at their number one seed. Thomas inside to Warnock, gets it to Butler, and Butler, and loose ball. Warnock gets it back, here comes Jefferson. Jefferson sees McLeod, he also sees Scott, but he also sees the rim. And he's fouled as he drives to the lane. Different atmosphere here in Houston, Texas. The Hornets lead it by two. Fighting Tiger basketball. Swack, quarterfinal action. TSU Sports Network. Every score and block, the sights, the sounds, and intensity will all come together in Houston, Texas. The 2017 Toyota Swag Basketball Tournament inside the Toyota Center, Friday and Saturday, March 10th and 11th. Be there to share the experience of a lifetime with family and friends and see what happens when you get set for takeoff and go beyond the rim. Visit swag.org to purchase tickets and for more information. With every score and block, the sight, the sound, we and are the swag. Our heritage lifts us to great heights because my history is forged by trailblazers that motivates me today to focus on my future. We are the swag. We are the new trailblazers. And this is my heritage. Twelve to ten, your score early on here as the Tigers trail the Hornets. First round action here, quarterfinal action here inside the HMP arena. Let's talk SWAC Player of the Year honors, Akil. Tigers of TSU sweeping the categories. Sweeping the categories, and six of the seven you had past years, you had an MVP come out of TSU, and Coach Mike Davis recruits the best. Coach Mike Davis recruits the best, and that's you got to give him credit. You know, A-Rag Murray, Medeiros Gibbs, Derek Griffin, now Zach Lofton. So you got to give credit to Coach Mike Davis and the players to buy into the system as well. Tyree Bynum attempts an early three. Hornets on the rebound. 
Loose ball, and Kevin Scott comes away with it. He sees Jefferson, looks for Bennett. Oh, my goodness. I love it. 12 to 12, and Trey Jefferson with her finger roll. A reverse finger roll. My goodness. A triple reverse finger roll. <laughs> I thought the alley was going to come to Stephen Bennett, but he took it himself and had the nice, nasty left-handed layup. We'll hear from Marcus Smith in just a bit. Here's the floor. Hits the shot. Let's go live to Marcus Smith on the sidelines. As Coach Davis at the break talked about one thing. He reiterated the fact that, hey, this is the swag tournament. A couple of, couple of those possessions, they weren't getting back, getting rebounds. And you saw a couple of second chance buckets from the Alabama State Hornets. Coach Davis said one thing. Get those rebounds, guys. This is it. You guys lose this game, you go home. Alabama State continues to play. If you really want it, get those rebounds. You can't have guys stand at the half court line getting back on offense for the easy bucket. So those are going to be some of the things that we look forward to later in this half. Guys? Thanks a lot, Marcus Smith, on the sidelines. He mentioned it, and one mistake can knock you off the playoffs and send you back home. Exactly, but right now Alabama State is up by – I want to say two points right now. And they're playing a good game right now. It's, it's still early. We've seen it with the ladies' game, so no need to panic. But he is right. One game, one mistake, a couple of costly mistakes will knock you out the playoffs. And you do not want to see the Tigers go down early in the first round as the heavy favorites in this tournament. Alabama State led by head coach Lewis Jackson, assistant coaches Anthony Sewell, Steve Rogers, Michael Curry. Alabama State, Montgomery, Alabama. Home state of the SWAC office, Birmingham. Here's a shot by Armstrong. Armstrong not getting a start tonight. Alabama State guys, six game losing streak, still made the SWAC tournament. How lucky can you be? How lucky can you be is the question, and you know, due to the play, they had the last six games. They gotta find some momentum. And it starts right now in this first half. And a lot of action going on inside the paint. Tyree Bynum and Torloff Thomas. 11.51 left to go here in the first half. And the Tigers and the Hornets doing batter in the H and PE arena. We'll be right back. You're watching the SWAC Tournament on the TSU Sports Network. My name is Zach. My mom works, so I ride Metro Speed 32 to school every day. I'm the drum major for Cashmere High School's Thunder Soul Marching Band. Every time I hit the field, it's like a dream. I just feed off the energy. But my real dream is to go from the Thunder Soul to the Ocean of Soul at TSU. And Metro's gonna take me there. I'm Zach, and this is my Metro. Contest here inside the H and PE at Keel 14 to 12. And the Hornets have the Tigers number here early on. They're coming on a six game losing streak. The Tigers, on the other hand, they have yet to lose here inside the H and P arena this season. Yeah, Alabama State right now, they're the HC. They had nothing to lose right now. They're the six game losing streak. Had nothing to lose. You're on the road. You just got to play your hardest out for 40 minutes against a team like TSU and see what happens. Hornet 6 and 12 in swag play. Kevin Scott just getting bodied down low by number 25. That's Michael Tyson, the sophomore from Detroit, Michigan.
Who are some of the Hornets that impress you early on here? I like Amir Warnock because we talked about the second chance points that he got there early in the game. He's getting the extra puck points, the extra buckets. So that's you love to see for Warnock right now. Look at the game right now, 7 for 19, 36% from the field. And Warnock leads the team right now with six points. Tigers cut the lead down to one on the three by Tyree Bynum. LaFour goes inside to Armstrong, and Armstrong can't finish. Trey Jefferson. Scott back to Bynum. No. And Lofton almost stuck a hand in him. Thomas pulls up. And LaFleur has it. And Kevin Scott is going to be whistled for the quick foul. And that's what we talked about right now, the second chance points, the extra rebounds, fighting for the extra boards. We see you right now in the game. Alabama State is out rebounding TSU 16-6 right now through the first 10 minutes of the first half. So they had to get them in eight points in the second chance points for Alabama State, only two for Texas Southern. TSU has to find a way to get rebounds and don't let Alabama State get momentum by getting second chance points. Here are the Hornets. When with a hand in his face is Zach Lofton. Here's LaFleur. LaFleur pulls it from outside. Bucket. 19 to 15, and another three for the Alabama State Hornets here. I never understood why the referee stands so close to the basketball. Here's Jefferson. In and out the bucket. I guess they want to get inside the action very, very depth and very close to get every inch of it. Lofton. Looking for Bynum. Bynum with the back door off the bucket. And he's whistled for an offensive foul. If you're Tyree Bonner, you have when you get the ball, I know you want to go for the layup and be aggressive. But sometimes it's always good to pull up for that mid-range jumper or bring it out to play. Because them charging calls right now, they already set up. You got to have the IQ and knowledge to bring the ball back out to play. Hornets lead by four. Hornets led by number one, Rodney Simeon, 12.4 points per game. Had 15 in his last contest versus Jackson State. As LaFleur goes up. And LaFleur is fouled. They're going to give it on number 24, Marvin Jones. And we know one thing about Marvin Jones is he stays in foul trouble. He do. And look at that last play right there from Marvin Jones. It's kind of questionable. It, it can go either way because from our angle, it looked like he didn't foul him. But the referee had a better angle at the same time. So it's one of the calls we can't disagree on, but you would hate to see Marvin Jones in this type of game get in foul trouble. Terrence LaFleur, the red shirt junior from Wintumpka, Alabama, shooting 59% of the season so far from the charity strike. Misses the second of two. Ball is loose. And Jones comes away with it. Jefferson sets up the play. Here's Walker. McLeod jump shot. Buckets. 19 to 18, and the Alabama State Hornets lead is cut to one. LaFleur has it. Gets over to Armstrong. Hornets to run some offense here. Torloff Thomas wants it. Creates his own shot. In and out. Ray Jefferson from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. McLeod from Fort Worth. Oh, my goodness. And Marvin Jones tried to slam it back home. Marvin Jones always gets a good look 
Just couldn't finish right there. Let's take a look at this last replay here for the Tigers. You see Marvin Jones fine for the rebound early in the game with the putback stretch getting up there. And it's, it, it, you hate to see him go out the game with two fouls. And at this point right now, it's very big because already in the game, Alabama State is already out rebounding the Tigers. So now Stephen Bennett has to have a, a huge task in front of him that he got to get, he has to guard Amir Warnock. So he's going to play a vital role this final eight minutes of this first half. Warnock stands at 6'9". Stephen Bennett stands at 6'10". They're going to call the number. They're going to call a foul on Tony Armstrong, the offensive foul. His first. Here's McLeod. Loose ball. And Steve Rogers has it. Here's the double team. Man has to be open. Armstrong goes up and good hands by Stephen Bennett, but the big man, Amir Warnock, was just too tall. There he goes again, Amir Warnock. That's five offensive rebounds already for Amir Warnock in this game. Has eight points. They got to find a way to get him in foul trouble. You got to box him out because he's playing a big role right now while Alabama State has his lead. Trey Jefferson can't finish. Media timeout coming up real soon. Loose ball. Delaney Robinson into the contest for the Tigers. Robinson lets Stephen Bennett have it. And Bennett can't finish. McLeod over to Walker. And Amir Warnock whistle for the foul. Media timeout. Tigers lead it. Excuse me, Hornets lead it by three, 21 to 18. We'll be right back. You're watching Fighting Tiger Basketball on the TSU Sports Network. Uptown Diamond offers an experience. 21 to 18, and the Fighting Tigers of Texas Southern Trail by three. Let's take a look as we saw the replay on the screen. Akil, the Tigers have some work to do. They trail by three. Not out of it just yet. But there's a lot going on here inside the first half. It's just rebounding. They getting second chance points like I preached about in the keys to victory. You have to box them out. And Alabama State, key to victory was to crash the board and out muscle TSU. And that's what's going on. That's why they have the three point lead right now. Who are some of the Tigers impressing you early on here in the first half? Well, Trey Jefferson's playing good ball right now, five points, and he's distributing the ball as people, as you see him fighting for the point right now. But as right now, you see Trey Jefferson being a key guy right now, five points. But I want to see Jalen McLeod get more involved. He knocked down a three. And if Jalen McLeod gets into this game and gets rolling, look out for Alabama State because TSU will be coming along fast. Jelani Robinson into the contest for the Tigers, as we just stated earlier. He'll set things up here for the Tigers. He'll take the three. High off the glass, no good. Rebound, Bennett. 
And Bennett goes up for the finish. And Bennett there you finishes. Go. That's you want to see right there from Stephen Bennett playing that role right now the final six minutes. Let's go live to Marcus Smith on the sidelines. Hey, guys, over at the break, Coach Davis was still harping on the same things he was just talking about, rebounding the ball. They've been doing a better job at it as of lately, but still, he wants them to see all five guys going to the ball, attack the boards. And, hey, on offense, one thing it was said. If you have the lane, get to the cup. They've been settling for a lot of ill-advised jump shots. Some have been going in, some haven't. He said, get to the cup, get easy buckets. Hey, the game can be so much simpler than they're making it. Coach Davis just wants them to buy in and continue to play hard. It's whack tournament time, guys. It's all or nothing. Nick, Akil, back to you guys. And Jalen McLeod answers the Coach Davis huddle, 22 to 21. You talked about Jalen McLeod. You like him in this contest. I like Jalen McLeod. Yes, I do. But another person I like right now is Delaney Robinson. He hasn't been the same since non-conference play. Before Trey Jefferson got in, you've seen Delaney Robinson be that key guy on the court, the floor general. Ever since Trey Jefferson got in, it's like, he's, it's like his confidence went low. And it happens in sports. But you want to see Delaney Robinson play a big role in this game and going forward. Warnock comes out the contest with two fouls. That'll bring in number 25, Michael Tyson. Michael Tyson actually leads this team in field goal percentage. It's related to Mike Tyson? <laughs> Hopefully this Mike, Mike, this Mike Tyson won't knock you out of nothing on the court. No, not at all. <laughs> Got a new mop out there. Oh, you kidding me? The referee has to do it? So you got to be a ref where's and clean ball, the floor? Where's our ball boys? I thought we had boys? one. We had one last year. So we got to have, so the ref has to do an extra job to referee the game and clean the floor. We should let Marcus do it. We should let Marcus clean the floor since he ought to be talking on it. <laughs> Zach Lofton up the floor. Lofton behind Bennett. Bucket. Zach Lofton goes into the lane for two. And he'll step to the free throw line to attempt a three-point play. And that's the guy right now, Zach Lofton, player of the year. You want to see him get going right now, has seven points. So you want to see him get, get going, coming off the bench, final four minutes, end it off with some momentum going into the locker room. Tigers lead it by three. And Zach Lofton steps to the free throw line, shooting 79% from the charity strike. Has hit 170 free throws, make it 171 this season. Jesus Christ, that's a lot of free throws. First half action here. Quarterfinals. Swag tournament. Hornets and the Tigers of Texas Southern. Thomas with no help. Butler driving to the lane. And Michael Tyson with the putback. Another second chance point. Has to box out. You got to find bodies. Alabama State is in this game for one reason right now, and that's second chance points. And there's a ball situation. I've never seen a referee stop the game for to check the basketball here. Oh, of course, the ball is wet. You I know. think Tom Brady's in the house somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to say it's a deflated basketball. <laughs> the PSI. Deflate game <laughs> in H&P Arena. 14 left on the shot clock. Media timeout coming up real soon. Lofton, and he's going to be whistled for, nope. The foul's going to go to number 25, Michael Tyson. Along with the media timeout, and the Tigers take the lead, 25 to 23. We'll be right back. You're watching SWAT quarterfinal action right here on the TSU Sports Network. We'll all come together in Houston, Texas. The 2017 Toyota SWAC Basketball Tournament inside the Toyota Center. Friday and Saturday, March 10th and 11th.
Be there to share the experience of a lifetime with family and friends and see what happens when you get set for takeoff and go beyond the rim. Visit SWAC.org to purchase tickets and for more information. Just under four minutes left to go here in the first half. Tigers lead it by two, 25 to 23. Nice crowd here at the H&P Arena. Cynthia Cooper in the house. Prairie View A&M back on the road as they go support the Fighting Pandas of Prairie View A&M. They're playing Grambling up in Prairie View, Texas. That's gonna be a good game too. I think that's one of the better games in the quarterfinals. Prairie View and Grambling. Actually, I have Grambling winning that game. Sorry, Prairie View fans. <laughs> Zach Lofton hits the first free throw. Lofton hits the second free throw. 27 to 23. Zach Lofton now has 10 points. Leads all scorers, by the way. Here's Simeon. Simeon shoots it from the right wing. And Michael Tyson with the putback. Again, another second chance bucket for the Alabama State Hornets. Trey Jefferson creates his own shot. Nice hang time. Kisses it off the window. Count it. Here's the entry pass. Tyson, turnaround jumper. Rebound Robinson. Robinson looks for Jefferson. Jefferson shoots. And Kevin Scott with the scoop put back. I like Kevin Scott. Oh, Kevin Scott, I think he's grown into a, a very good player. At first, I just thought his role would be a, a a regular just role player getting buckets, you know, just get his complimentary buckets here and there. But he's going to be one of the main scorers on this team, along with Trey and Zach Lofton and Jalen McLeod. We'll hear from assistant coach Donnie Marsh rolling inside the locker room. We'll hear about the defensive stand for the Tigers here early on. 25 points given up so far. On that foul was number 11. Delani Robinson, his first. And let's look at the stats right here. 15 second chance points for Alabama State to only six for TSU. And the key stat I'm looking at right now, Warnock leading the way with eight points for their team and six rebounds, but 10 offensive rebounds for Alabama State to 11 defensive rebounds for TSU. So 22 rebounds overall for Alabama State, 16 overall for TSU. They have to find a way to stop Alabama State from getting rebounds and second chance points because that's why they're in this game right now. That's why TSU only has a five point lead with two and a half minutes left in the first half. Torlov Thomas, 74% free throw shooter as he hits the second. Tigers with big wins over Delaware State, Rice, LaSalle, and James Madison early on in the season. Largely due to that guy right there, Zach Lofton. And the rest of the Tigers. Here's Thomas. Shot. Wet. 31-29. The Hornets cut the lead down to two. Like how Thomas right now controlling that Alabama State offense, being that floor general, that senior leader for Alabama State. Total out Thomas now with seven, with four points, six points in this game. Robinson to the lane, sweeps it to Walker. And a steal from the Hornets. Oh. 
Hornets with 15 on shot clock. Shot is up by Armstrong, and here's the tip back. Armstrong tries to put it in. Bucket. 31 to 31. Great job there by the Hornets. 16 left on the shot clock for the Tigers. As this game is not at 31. Foul is going to go against number 52, Steve Rogers. As Trey Jefferson drives to the baseline. Trey Jefferson on the season shooting 70%. Shot five for five in his last contest as the Tigers defeated the Southern Jaguars 82 to 69. Jalen McLeod was the leading point scorer in that contest with 23. Trey Jefferson dropped 22. Yeah, man, watching after what happened at the play right now, the last couple positions, Zach Lofton been, seems a little bit upset of what's going on right now. You see Trey Jefferson and Zach Lofton jawing back and forth. That's why Coach Mike Davis is going to the bench with Zach Lofton. And they got control of their temper. You know, you're up one. I understand it's a playoff game. This is a young team. Really no senior-led teams on this team per se, but Trey and Zach is their two main players. They have to control their temper going to the locker room. They're going to talk things out. And Coach Marsh and Coach Davis are going to have halftime adjustments for them so, so they can extend this lead. 33-31. And Delaney Robinson comes his way with the steal. Robinson, the Scott. Scott off the glass. Count the bucket. Great pass from Delaney Robinson. Great half-court pass to Kevin Scott for the easy layup. Quick timeout by head coach Lewis Jackson. We'll keep it right here. Lewis Jackson been around the swag for quite some time. Has been to a couple of swag tournaments himself. Jackson career record of 179 to 195. His first year was 2005-2006. Alabama State was coached by C.J. Dunn for 29 years. Lewis Jackson has got to be trying to put up a couple of points before they step into the locker room here. Here's Armstrong. Armstrong into the paint. Shot is up by Cole. Trey Jefferson sees there's 10 seconds left in the contest. Excuse me, in the second, in the first half. Jefferson works it. Jefferson shoots it. Jefferson ices it. 38 to 31, and the Tigers take a seven point lead into the locker room. 38 to 31. We're going to hear from assistant coach Donnie Marsh as Marcus Smith catches up with him. Akil, early on, the Alabama State Hornets look pretty decent out there. Tigers made the adjustment. Well, I think it's because of the second chance points and the rebounding from Alabama State that kept them in this game. Let's go live to Marcus Smith on the sideline. With the assistant head coach, Donnie Marsh, coach, 38-31 uh, lead so far in this first half. What did you see out of the Tigers that you personally liked? Well, I'll tell you what, we they, they, they're just getting too many second chance opportunities. That's the bottom line. If we block out, we get rebounds, then we can go because they're going to be a little fatigued. Our problem is we haven't kept them off the glass. That, and that's one of the things I'm noticing as well. Second chance bucks are killing us. Do you feel that uh, when, you eliminate, when you eliminate those things, 
do you think that this team can't, doesn't even belong on the same floor with the Tigers? Well, I won't go, won't go that far because any team at this level can compete. But the bottom line is in taking care of ourselves, if we just block out, limit them to one rebound and get one shot, excuse me, and then we can go. We can run on them the rest of the day. Let's see. Let's hope we see some of that in the second half. You Coach, bet. go make the adjustments. We'll see you in the next half. Appreciate it. Thank you. Nick Akil, back to you guys. That'll do it for us right here at the table. We'll come back with second half action in just a bit. 38 to 31 in the Fighting Tigers lead the Alabama State Hornets by seven. We'll be right back. You're watching SWAT quarterfinal action right here, only on the TSU Sports Network. Three score and block. The sight, the sound, and intensity will all come together in Houston, Texas. The 2017 Toyota Swag Basketball Tournament inside the Toyota Center. Friday and Saturday, March 10th and 11th. Be there to share the experience of a lifetime with family and friends and see what happens when you get set for takeoff and go beyond the rim. Visit swag.org to purchase tickets and for more information. We are the Swag. Our heritage lifts us to great heights because my history is forged by trailblazers that motivates me today to focus on my future. We are the SWAC. We are the new trailblazers. And this is my heritage. This is where crisp, smooth, refreshing Bud Light happens. But it is right here that it becomes an invitation, making this not only 12 ounces of refreshment, but also 12 ounces of inspiration. To be more up for whatever than ever. Bud Light. The perfect beer for reading and unleashing a whole world of whatever in the name of a ridiculously good time. If you're up for whatever, look for your message on Bud Light Bottles. Bud Light, the perfect beer for whatever happens. Think. Question. Cut. Compare. Learn something new. Debunk something old. Hit a wall. And think again. Model. Plan. Spin. Discard. Now breathe. And keep going. Work till it's late. Then early. Then late again. Smile. Laugh. Rest. Regroup. Use technology. Use your hands. Use everything you've got. That's what it takes. Find the fabric of a team. It's not selfish. It's not boastful. It's about many, sewn together to reach one common goal. But in order to win, we must learn to work together. Like no other. From the 100% customization to the true lifetime guarantee. We identify the traditional four C's, cut, color, clarity, and carrot. But capture is something only Uptown Diamond provides. Capture is a diamond's intangible ability to accurately reflect you and the special person receiving your custom jewelry. You've captured her heart. Now, take her breath away.
38 to 31 year score. Welcome back here inside the H and PE Arena. Nick Strong alongside Akeel Williams. Marcus Smith here on the sidelines. Akeel, the Tigers are looking good here early on in the contest, still early on here, start of the second half coming up. But let's take a look at some of these replays here early on from the first half. Early game, you see Marvin Jones with the put back after the second chance bucket. Put back dunk from Marvin Jones early in the first half. You see the rebound from Kevin Scott. Going to have court to Trace Jefferson with the nice left-handed silky layup smooth. As always, Lamont walk on the wing, pivot step, jab step, trying to get the defender off guard. Trey Jefferson with the hesitation move, lost the ball, gave it to Jalen McLeod for the deep, wide open splash from the wing. Zach Lawton dribbling down the ball down the court. Alabama stay in the zone. Sweet pass to Kevin Scott. Back to Zach Lawton off the pick off of Stephen Bennett. Goes to lay on the left side with an and one play off the defender. Turlock Thomas trying to size up Trey Jefferson in a man to man. Turn off from Delonte Robinson. He tried to get past Trey Jefferson. Cross court to Kevin Scott for the layup. See Jalen McLeod right now. Kevin Scott telling to move around to the other side. Trey Jefferson with the ball. Number 12 say, uh-uh, can't hold me. Bye -bye. Step back three from Trey Jefferson. And that's one of Trey Jefferson's 12 points in that first half. Step back, can't hold me. Bang, bang. 38-31, <laughs> and to start this half, the Alabama State Hornets will have possession. Corvon Butler to inbound his basketball for the Alabama State Hornets. A lot of action here tonight inside the H&PE Arena. Can you see me? You can't see me. LaFleur on the floor. And LaFleur for the deuce. No. Here comes Kevin Scott. Looks for Jefferson. Jefferson drives to the lane. And they have to reset for McLeod. Thirty-eight, thirty-one. Tigers lead it by seven. Here's Lofton. Look for Jefferson. Jefferson swings it, driving into the lane. Nice move. Buckets. The Alabama State Hornets secure trail by nine. If your head coach Lewis Jackson, how do you get your team back into this contest? Well, you got to get back crashing the boards. We look at that first half. 14 offensive rebounds and 19 second chance points for Alabama State. Our rebounding TSU 27 to 20. You have to get back rebounding ball. I mean, that's part of the reason why. That was the majority of the reason why you had it. You was in the game in the first half. And that was one of the keys we talked about too. Stay in this game. Stay as close as possible to TSU. Don't let TSU get momentum. And they have to get back to rebounding the ball in the second half. Jalen McLeod whistled for the foul. His first as LaFleur steps to the free throw line. LaFleur shooting 59% from the charity stripe this season to go along with 2.7 assists per game. He likes to drive to the lane. He likes to dish off the passes. Second free throw is up. Second free throw is good. Tigers got to get to the Toyota Center Friday. Semifinal action. What does Coach Davis tell his team inside the locker room? Well, they got control of their temper. We seen late in the first half, we seen a little something else going on with Trey Jefferson and Zach Lofton on the floor and in the huddle, so they had to control their temper. It's, they're young. Oh, my goodness. I thought it was heavy. I, I had to stop my, my answer just by what we seen just now from Trey Jefferson. I thought we were seeing a, a, a real-life hoop mixtape just now. But they had to control their temper and get back to playing tissue ball while they had what they played in the regular season. Yeah, Trey Jefferson just kind of made his own highlight reel there, but Alabama State Hornets kind of added to the end of the highlight reel. <laughs> if he didn't get blocked on that play, man. Marvin Jones working on r not. It's Scott, five left on the shot clock, the step back, in and out the rim. And it was last touched by the big man, Marvin Jones. Alabama State basketball. Alabama State, Akeel, 8-22 on the season this year. 
Last year they won 14 games overall. They won nine conference games last year, six games this year. Don't want to say they're on the decline, but things weren't looking good in Montgomery at the end of that season. Well, I just think it was a down year, so to speak. I mean, you were the eighth seed in the swag, but under, but went under 500. So, I mean, it was a down year. Plus, you end, this, you end the season off with a six-game losing streak. You in the playoffs, you in the tournament, but you want to end that season off strong because say if you didn't get off a six-game losing streak, what if you had won five of the six or four of the six? You know, so it's always, you know, what ifs, but you in the tournament. So anything is possible exactly. in March. Tigers only lose two conference games this season, Mississippi Valley and Jackson State, both games on the road. Ball is loose. Here's McLeod. Jefferson finds Scott. Scott dribbles, loses the basketball. And last touch out of bounds by Corvon Butler, the senior from Indianapolis, Indiana. Warnock comes out the contest. The big 6'9 junior from Atlanta, Georgia. 20 left on the shot clock here for the Tigers. Here's Jefferson. Here comes the big man, Marvin Jones. As he faces up on Tony Armstrong, and Armstrong is whistled for the foul. Great play for Marvin Jones, demanding that ball. You want to see your big man demand the ball in the post. He felt he had sort of a mismatch. Warnock's not in the game, so he felt he had a mismatch. So he wants the ball in that block. So look for him to keep calling for the ball the next few, few possessions down the court. Marvin Jones knocks down the first of two, shooting 79% on the season from the charity strike. And hits both free throws. 42 to 32, and the Tigers extend the lead to 10. Here's Simeon. Five second territory. Armstrong can't do anything with it. Marvin Jones and Demontre Jefferson playing the high low game. Ten left on the shot clock for the Tigers. Here's Jones in the paint. And Tony Armstrong gets whistled for the foul. And if you're the Tigers, if you're Trey Jefferson, McLeod, Lofton, guys on the perimeter, keep feeding the ball to Marvin Jones. Keep going to him. He has the mismatch. Now, never mind all that now. Warner's going to come into the game, <laughs> so he's going to put a stop to that a little bit. But... Keep going back to Marvin Jones. If he has a mismatch, just keep going to Jones in the block. Marvin Jones knocks down his third free throw of the night. Delani Robinson substitutes in for Jalen McLeod. Delani Robinson, the transfer from University of Pacific. Transfer senior, averaging 6.7 points per game. He'll add an extra body to the guard position. Tigers running with three guards on the floor. Jefferson, Scott, and Lofton. Here's Thomas. Thomas with the teardrop floater. Media timeout on the floor. And the Tigers lead it by 10. You're watching SWAT quarterfinal action here on the TSU Sports Network.
Town Dime. Sounds of Zero the Dime from your neck of the woods, most city, Texas. That song is forever going to be in our hearts <laughs> of, of most of Missouri City, Texas. That song came out in 06 at the high point of Houston music career, music time in that era. That song is not just one of the best songs in Missouri City, but in Houston history. 44-34, the Tigers lead it by 10. Here's Jefferson. Buckets. 47 to 34, and the Tigers extend the lead to 13. LaFleur tries to answer. Let's go live to Marcus Smith on the sideline. Coach Mike Davis at the break was talking about the intangibles. Running back on defense, watching your position as well. Not coming up too far, just staying home to maintain the protection of the basket. He was particularly talking to Marvin Jones saying, hey, you're coming too high up, and that's why they're getting behind you for easy layups and offensive rebounds. To eliminate that, stay home, maintain your ground, maintain your spacing. Simple things. You see they have a 13-point lead right now. That's because they've been buckling down and buying in. The story of the first half has not been the story of the second half. And right now, the Tigers are playing on all cylinders. Nick, Akil, back to you guys. Kevin Scott to the free throw line. And Kevin Stocks, Kevin Scott extends his lead to 15 for the Tigers. G from Montgomery, Alabama. Here comes Robinson. Delaney. And he's fouled by Simeon. Great hands. Great hands from Delano Robertson. Seeing, playing that ball the whole way. And you got to love that defensive play from Delaney Robertson. Delaney Robinson at the free throw line this season, shooting 84%. Second on the team behind Jalen McLeod. Got some swag scores. Got some sweat scores right now. Jackson State is up at halftime on the road to Southern, 34-25. Remember, that was the rematch from the last year's championship. Grambling's up by four, Prairie View, 39-35 on the road. And this winner will get the winner of that contest. Yeah, exactly. And Alcorn State barely escaped from Valley State, 63-60. I like Mississippi Valley's chances, but Alcorn was probably just a little bit too tough there. A little bit too tough. You know, I think they just caused a lot of mismatch problems. But you know, they held Valley from scoring because Valley can it's score the ball. Team, that's right. So, but Jackson State said, I'm not really surprised from that score. Jackson State was in the, was running up to the championship two Southern last season. So, a little bit of revenge, so to speak. Here come the Hornets. They trail by 15. Shot is blocked by Marvin Jones. Four on one. It's showtime. I thought Trey was going to hit Zach Lofton, but he hit Kevin Scott instead. Hit Kevin Scott. He hit us with the okie doke, but great block from Marvin Jones, a.k.a. Stretch on that block on a defensive stand. That's why he's the defensive player of the year. Free throw is up. Free throw is no good by Kevin Scott. Let's talk about it again, Akil. Swag player of the year, Zach Lofton. Freshman of the year, Demontre Jefferson. Newcomer of the year. I want to say Trey. I want to say Zach Lofton. It was Zach Lofton. And defensive player of the year. Marvin Jones. We swept everything. At least the swag got that right. At least they got the <laughs> men's right. You know, I, I'm still not over that. I'm still not over Joyce Kennison getting not getting player of the year. So I, they got the men right, though. <laughs> they got the men right. And coach of the year, of course. Well, it went to the Alcorn State coach, which is well deserved. Yeah, I think it was, too. I mean, I would have think for Mike Davis to get coach of the year, he would have had to sweep through the conference. Yeah. Yeah, but we've seen year in the year out, Mike Davis is, has the same job. So it's kind of good to give it up to somebody else. So that was that was good for the sweat. Yeah, Zach Lofton, player of the year and newcomer of the year. Let's keep it right here. Timeout on the floor. 
Let's bring Marcus Smith into the conversation here while we have about 14 and a half minutes left to go here in this contest or in this second half. Guys, thank you a lot for letting me come into your house this season. All these guys, both of these guys, students in the School of Communications, MLK building. Marcus Smith will be graduating this semester. Akil will be graduating next year. Marcus, your first year, your thoughts about the TSU Sports Network working on the sidelines? This was... You're holding the mic kind of tight. I can't even put it into words, honestly. You're holding the mic kind of tight. I'm a little, I'm a little loose, <laughs> but you know what? I can't put it into words. I mean, this has been a really great experience working with you guys. I'm not just Akil, Nick. I mean, Jeremy, Jr., Meshack over there, the rest of the the production crew, Andrew Roberts. I mean, I'm just thankful for the opportunity. This is something that I've been grilling TSU and every, every official saying, "Hey, we have to do something like this. It's 2017. We have to get. We have to." Stay updated. So to finally see this come to light, it's a beautiful thing. I, I love it. Akil, your thoughts? Well, I'm thankful for having the opportunity. You know, I've been working with Marcus Smith for like two years already since I got to TSU. My first year working with you, doing this. He's your boss too, right? At the Herald, right? He's my boss. He, yeah, <laughs> he, he can say he's my boss, you know. But you got to respect what Marcus Smith doing his hustle and his grind. But I want to thank Andrew Roberts for letting us have this opportunity to do this network because I'm, I'm thankful every day. To try to get better at my craft each and every day. TSU Sports Network on the rise for many years to come here at Texas Southern University. 50 to 34, your score, and the Tigers lead it by 16. And Zach Lofton tried to give the Tigers a 19 point lead there. Here's Thomas Torloft in and out. Last touch by Zach Lofton. I'm gonna have the back door for baseball season, guys. Here's I know Simeon. you're ready for that one. Simeon with the long range. Gotta talk to Roberts about getting out there in McGregor Park. Huh. <laughs> well, if, he, if he do that with you, let me know. Well, I really never been too much baseball like I used to. Used to used to love it back in the day. Maybe a little softball as well. Yeah. Jefferson up top looks for Lofton. Left side Scott. Jones working on Warnock. Here's the hook shot, Bucket. 52 to 37, and Marvin Jones is all over the place. Eight points for him. Trey Jefferson was right there with the pick. Here's G, G for three, and G knocks it down. G with his first three of the night. Nice shot by, by G for Alabama State, but you gotta love TSU right now. Marvin Jones, this is his second half right now. The man in that ball on the block, keep giving it to him. Keep giving the ball to Marvin Jones because he has the high hand right now. Jones looking for his 10th point. He's got it. Marvin Jones, Trey Jefferson, Zach Lofton, all in double digits. Trey Jefferson leads Tiger scores with 17. And Butler slams it home for two. Hornets cut the lead down to 12. Game is not over just yet. Blocking foul on Rodney Simeon. That's his third. Stephen Bennett steps into the contest. Bennett with one foul, two points. Bennett's always got some fans on the TSU Sports Network chat lines. He has the most fans. He, got, he has a huge following. <laughs> I didn't know that from Stephen Bennett, the fan favorite. All the way from Lake Station, Indiana. Has more fans than Marcus Smith. That's hard to do. Very hard. Marcus doesn't even follow anybody back on Twitter. Of course. Instagram. It's Marcus Smith you're talking about. <laughs> he believes he the boss of all bosses. That's why. Zach Lofton looks for Jefferson. 13 left on the shot clock. Oh my goodness. Kevin Scott tries to finish. As Meshack Sullivan steps out the way. Trey Jefferson puts the move on him. 
And that'll take us to the media timeout. Tigers lead it by 12. We'll be right back. You're watching SWAT quarterfinal action on the TSU Sports Network. My name is Zach. My mom works, so I ride Metro's 52 to school every day. I'm the drum major for Cashmere High School's Thunder Soul Marching Band. Every time I hit the field, it's like a dream. I just feed off the energy. But my real dream is to go from the Thunder Soul to the Ocean of Soul at TSU. And Metro's gonna take me there. I'm Zach, and this is my Metro. Tiger basketball here on the TSU Sports Network. Let's take a look at a couple of highlights here. You see the play from Trey Jefferson passing around the block, passing around the perimeter, should I say, down to Marvin Jones, body no war not. You too small. That's what he said. Barbecue chicken, like Shaq says. Jump hook. <laughs> nice play for Marvin Jones right now. Marvin Jones in double figures with 10 points. Tigers lead it by 12. Great job by Stephen Bennett right there. And a great job by the Hornets right there. That's Corvon Butler getting the ball right back. Let's go live to Marcus Smith on the sidelines. Hey, guys, over at the break, Coach Davis was talking about, well, not even Coach Davis, Coach Marsh. He was talking about his defensive presence out there. You saw the, you saw the Alabama Hornets come out with a little bit, hit some threes, but one of the things he was really saying was sit down on defense, guard your man, shut them down, and get the rebound. It's that simple. They've been coming back in this game just a little bit. You saw them take a little bit more momentum. They want to lock down defensively and maintain their presence. Guys, back to you. Thanks a lot. As Marcus gets his next interview ready. Who is this court named after? That's the trivia question. We'll just leave it at that. We won't answer it just yet. Type your comments in the chat section. You should make it harder for them. I think a lot of people know the name of the court, but they don't know what year he coached. Oh, wow. <laughs> make it hard on them if they're real Tiger fans. Well, what about the year he came back and coached? You that weren't too. here for that. I wasn't here for that one. <laughs> I remember he got it well. We, 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 we won't spill yeah, the beans. We ain't, ain't, ain't going to spill the beans. Kevin Scott to the free throw line. Bucket. Hits the first. Kevin Scott shooting 72% this season from the charity strike. Count the basket. Kevin Scott knocks down both. Let's go live down to Marcus Smith on the sideline. Hey, guys, I'm with. I'm here with a legendary Texas Southern head coach, Coach Robert Bob Moreland, all-time winningest coach in TSU history. Coach Moreland, Coach Bob, what may I call you today, sir? Whatever. <laughs> coach. Oh, it's all good, so whatever. Coach, have you got a chance to enjoy this game so far, this SWAC tournament game? Oh, yes, without a doubt, I have. Texas Southern doing a great job. I'm proud of them. They got a great team. Coach, you're no stranger to SWAC tournament and SWAC championships. First off, I see you have the chain on. Let's start right there. 1977 NAIA champions. What was going through your mind at that time? <laughs> well, we had a great basketball team. We had some great players, too. And uh, that was during a time when we had a lot of all the great players weren't here somewhere, somewhere else. So we had uh, an All-American, Alonzo Bradley, came from Mississippi with me. Uh, Marcella Singer played point guard for us. Had a kid by the name of Lawrence Williams that was recruited by uh, Jerry Tarkany at Vegas. Bill Caldwell from down at Galveston. Another young man by the name of Jane Butler that came from Mississippi. So we had an outstanding, and we had a lot of people on the bench that could play too. So 
it was an outstanding basketball team that we had that year. Coach, t current TSU head coach, Coach Mike Davis, has just won his third straight SWAC championship. You've won so many here. I'm looking at all the banners up here. What, what really goes into winning the SWAC championship, would you say, as a coach? Uh, some great players. <laughs> <laughs> It's much easier when you got great players. Uh, you don't have to expend, expend too much energy. Uh, now, when you don't have them, it makes for a very difficult situation, and we had some great players. Coach, one of the games that I've always talked to everybody, I brag about, is that 1995 NCAA tournament first round against first round game against Arkansas. Was, can, can you expunge on that a little bit? Just, just give me the final couple seconds of what happened down there. <laughs> Well, we had played Arkansas the year before. One of the things that we found that year was uh, each year it looked like uh, we were number 16, although we had a great basketball team. That was that We proved that. But each for two years in a row, we got Arkansas. And, of course, that year uh, when we played up at the University of Texas, uh, that was one heck of a basketball game. Uh, we had a chance to tie the ball game in the last few seconds. Uh, one of our kids got fouled on a three-point shot. He made the first two, missed the third one. And that was, and the game only had a few seconds left in the ball game at that particular point. But uh, it was an outstanding basketball team, and of course Arkansas was the number one team in the country at that particular point in time. So I guess it's, it says something about the young men that was playing for us at that time. And the reason why I harp on that game, the reason why I harp on that game is because still to this day TSU hasn't had an NCAA tournament win, and that was the closest TSU's got. But what do you what do you think about this team? and getting back to that stage and actually getting the first win in school history? Well, uh, Coach, Coach Davis got some very talented players on the court. That's, that's evident. And, of course, he and his staff have done a great job of getting them prepared to play basketball. So they are capable of doing some good things. The only problem, of course, that, that we tend to have in our, in our school is that the size that, you know, on the inside, and he has pretty decent size, but his, his strength, of course, are with the, with, the, with the guards. I mean, they get some outstanding guards. So, you know, they have an opportunity to do some good things. Well, right now the Tigers lead by 10, 58 to 48. We'll be looking forward to them winning this game and then playing in the semifinals of the SWAC tournament come Friday, March 10th. Nick Akil, back to you guys. Thank you very much. Coach, legendary Coach Moreland. Thank you, man. I, re I really appreciate it. And Marcus Smith grabbing the legendary coach, Robert Moreland, as the Tigers take a 10-point lead. Moreland, I got a chance to see him coach in 06, 07, I think it was, Akil. He came back for one more year, got that big 500 victory here at Texas Southern. Yeah, I, you think about that play, that game, 1995 in Arkansas. The 16th seed going against the number one team in the country in Arkansas. What if they would have pulled that off? That would have been the only 16 defeating the number one seed in NCAA tournament history. It came from Texas Southern. So I'm pretty sure them guys that played on that team probably think about, like, man, what if we accomplished that achievement? And as I look at Kevin Granger over there and the guys, As Zach Lofton loses the basketball. Lofton looks for Robinson. Robinson for three. Buckets! 63 to 50, and the Tigers extend the lead to 13. The line of Robinson is playing a big role in this game. Playing the most minutes I've seen from the line of Robinson in, the, in a while in conference play. The line of Robinson is stepping up on the defensive side of the ball and causing Havoc on a perimeter. Alabama State trying to give it one more run here as they inbound the basketball into their own rim. There's Thomas. Thomas shoots it. Thomas a little bit too anxious to shoot that three ball there. Media timeout coming up real soon. 8.03 left to go here in the second half.
And let's not forget about you voting for your player of the game out there in internet land. Here's Simeon. Warnock to the lane, hits the bucket. Is it gonna be Zach Lofton with 10 points? Jake, Kevin Scott with 11. Marvin Jones with 12. Don't forget about Demontre Jefferson. My vote for Marvin Jones. Had a tough task in this game. Had to go against Warner. You see the alley-oop from Marvin Jones in the end one. Great pass from Zach Lofton. Great dunk, great finish from Marvin, a.k.a. Stretch Jones, 7-2 but had, when he put his arm up, he's 7-8. 65-52, Tigers lead it by 13. You're watching the SWAC quarterfinals right here, only on the TSU. Welcome back to Swag Basketball right here. Only on the TSU Sports Network. Akil, take a look at this last dunk. And we see the ball rotate around. Zach Lawton to Marvin Jones with the alley -oop. My goodness, in the end, won 14 points. That's why I say he should be player of the game. He stepped up, had a tough task, because coming to this game, Alabama State was second and rebounded with 38. And for Marvin Jones to step up like this to the plate in his first playoff game in a Swag tournament against a team that has a big man, Amir Warner, that put his foot down in the first half and was the reason why Alabama State was in this game. And for him to come out in the second half, out that locker room, to demand the ball the way he has in this second half, I say right now he's, he's, he's the most important player and playing the best ball right now for the Tigers. Replay brought to you by Baylor College of Medicine. Marvin Jones to shoot the free throw, bucket. 66 to 52. Marvin Jones with 15. Here's LaFleur. And Zach Lofton. Looks for Scott. Scott left side. Here's Jefferson back into the contest. My goodness. Delani Robinson, no. Zach Lofton, yes. <laughs> Zach Lofton with the putback. Let's vote for player of the game, fans. Kevin Scott, 10.6 rebounds. Marvin Jones, 15.7 rebounds. Zach Lofton, 10 points, two rebounds. And Demontre Jefferson, 17 points, three rebounds. Marvin Jones also has two blocks to add to that. And Zach Lofton has four assists. And making another free throw hit for Zach Lofton. Now has 11 points for the Tigers, actually 13 points for the Tigers. And we can't forget that Marvin Jones is Five for five from the free from the field goal. He's 100 percent going along with four to six from free throw line. Let's check in on Marcus Smith and see what he has. At the break, Coach Davis was talking about defense on offense. It's no doubt that they can score. Marvin Jones has been taken over in the last couple of minutes with back-to-back -back bucks, especially that all of you for the N1. But defensively, it's something that Coach Davis was really harping on. He's saying, stay down, stay in your stance, continue to play aggressive without fouling then turn great defense into better offense. 
keep the game simple, guys. That's something that Coach Davis wants to continue to do. As the Hornets hit the three right there. Nick and the kill, back to you. Rodney Simeon hits the three, 15 points in this last contest. He leads the Hornets in points per game this season with 12.4. Voting for your player of the game. It is like watching TSU play. And Tony Smith has uh -oh. fouled out. We know what time it is. Marvin Jones back to the free throw line. Hits the first. The one and one. I see a Marvin Jones player of the game vote. Kevin Scott stepping in. And here's a quick foul on the Tigers. I see Zach Lofton stepping in the voting column. Marvin Jones. More Marvin Jones. More Marvin Jones. I'm telling you, Marvin Jones has to be the player of the game. Played a big role in this game to stop a guy like Amir Warnock. Marvin Jones. To Simeon and Marvin Jones just got a piece of Michael Tyson. I just don't want him falling out the game because now he has four fouls. Somebody said I'll take two votes, Marvin or Kevin Scott. <laughs> right, that's not bad. That's not bad at all taking Kevin Scott. Kevin Scott with 11 points on the, in the evening. Kevin Scott, six total rebounds. Marvin Jones close to a double-double. Fifteen point lead here for the Tigers, 71-56. Here's the free throw, in and out. Marvin Jones playing with four fouls. Oh, goodness. That's not fair. That's not fair, Nick. That's not fair, Nick. Trey Jefferson creates his own shot. That's not fair, Nick. That's just not fair. That is not fair at all. Demontre Jefferson giving the fans something to be excited about inside Houston, Texas. And Demontre Jefferson almost was on the breakaway. Kevon Butler quiets the crowd. Tigers lead by 15. Kevin Scott drives baseline. And his shot was blocked. Zach Lofton with the quick foul. Zach Lofton with his second.
There's a point spread on this contest, I see, huh? I never knew it was. <laughs> I never knew. Well, thank you, Las Vegas. <laughs> we will take the, the promotion, the free press. LaFleur to the free throw line. Shooting 59% this season. Couldn't make the one and one. Demontre Jefferson going to drive the two press to a double team. Here's Lofton. And Marvin Jones couldn't get in there for the offensive rebound. Hornets not out of it just yet. The only trail by 15. Make it 12. Media timeout coming up real soon. And sooner than we thought. 73 to 61. And Trey Jefferson having fun. It's SWAT quarterfinal action right here on the TSU Sports Network. Every score and block, the sights, the sounds, and intensity will all come together in Houston, Texas. The 2017 Toyota Swag Basketball Tournament inside the Toyota Center. Friday and Saturday, March 10th and 11th. Be there to share the experience of a lifetime with family and friends and see what happens when you get set for takeoff and go beyond the rim. Visit swag.org to purchase tickets and for more information. We are the Swag. Our heritage lifts us to great heights because my history is forged by trailblazers. That motivates me today to focus on my future. We are the SWAC. We are the new trailblazers. And this is my heritage. And the Tigers lead it by 12. Player of the game honors, candidates, Marvin Jones, Kevin Scott, Demontre Jefferson, Zach Lofton. I've seen more Marvin Jones votes than anyone else. Got a preference, Marcus Smith? Well, you guys know I'm a point guard myself back in my playing day, so I'm always a little bit biased towards a point guard, so I'm going to say Trey Jefferson. But strictly our performance, though, of course, none other than Marvin Jones, the big man down low, a.k.a. Stretch, the nickname of Kill Williams gave him. I mean, 17 points. He's closing in on a double-double. What's, what's he at, seven rebounds right now? I'm pretty sure he has more. I mean, he's been, he's been, he had the major impact on this game so far, and he's my player of the game. How about yours? Who's your player of the game? Well, I said Marvin Jones. Uh, Marvin Jones, you know, had a big role to fill, you know, had a big role to play because what Alabama State brought to the table was aggressiveness and toughness and grit because they was a second they were second in swag rebounding with 38. So I had to look at, okay, Marvin Jones has to be the guy to be the man. Even though I said Trey Jefferson be the key player, but we kind of expected this performance from him because he's going to tell point guard. So, but you've seen Marvin Jones demanded the ball in the second half. So, right now, I got him as player of the game. Marvin Jones, 17 points, nine rebounds on the evening, seven defensive rebounds. Demontre Jefferson, 21 points, three rebounds. Zach Lofton, 13 points, four assists, and four rebounds. Going to be interesting down the stretch. Keep voting, fans. Keep voting. You want to vote for two people like Tremendous 713 did, just do it. <laughs> Demontre Jefferson back to the free throw line as number 25, Michael Tyson, is whistled for his second foul. And Trey Jefferson knocks down another free throw. Watching the Tigers team led by Mike Davis, it's like they had a different speed than every other team in the SWAC. You know, just watching them play the game in the game out for the past two, three years I've been watching them play, they're just at a different level. You know, it's one thing to it's one thing to say, hey, 
it's kind of hard to beat them in H and P E arena. But it's hard to beat them overall. You had to really outplay them for a full 40 minutes if you have a chance to beat a Coach Mike Davis-led team. And it's, a, it's just a great performance overall. That's why they're the heavy favorites in the SWAG tournament. Tigers playing for the full possession of the shot clock. And Trey Jefferson back to the lane. And he goes back to the free throw line. Uh-oh, I think it's coming, Nick. The go sit down song should be coming. Free throw is up by Demontre Jefferson. Free throw is good. Wait, Nick, are you kidding me? They not playing the song? The man got fouled out the game. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm just saying, that's shocking. Two times, play, two players got fouled out of Alabama State. They have not played the infamous song from TSU, Go Sit Down. 24 points for Demontre Jefferson. Alabama State not looking good here in the last two minutes and 40 seconds. Tigers lead it by 17. Two Hornets have fouled out Rodney Simeon and Tony Armstrong. Alabama didn't really go with a deep bench tonight. Only two players deep. Jimmy, check that. They went four players deep so far. Reginald G, Tony Armstrong, Michael Tyson, and Steve Rogers. Tigers lead it by 15. Five left on the shot clock. Scott takes it. Scott shoots the air ball. It's the last home game of the year here at Keele, and Tigers have yet to lose. Have yet, yes, and have, have yet to lose. But it just caught a technical foul to Lonnie Robertson for jumping up because he wanted the ball to go their way. But, hey, didn't work, but they owe about 15 points. Technical foul as Torlov Thomas shoots the free throw. And he hits both. Not sure what really happened right there. What did Lionel Robertson, he had to, he was fighting for the ball with an Alabama State player, then he thought it was off of them, but it wasn't, so he was jumping up and down. I really didn't think it was a technical foul because he was laughing at the same time, but hey, it happens in basketball. Great job by Jefferson. The 
Montre Jefferson hits the first free throw. 79-65. And 25 points for DeMontre. Make it 26. And the freshman from Milwaukee, Wisconsin leads the way tonight for the Tigers. And Steve Rogers hits the off-balance circus shot. And one. Steve Rogers to the free throw line. And last touch of the bounds by the Alabama State Hornets. Just about a minute and a half left to go here in this contest. Tigers cruising to a first round victory over the Alabama State Hornets. Maybe Marcus might get two player of the games. I don't know. Trey to the free throw. Trey into the lane. Trey for 28. He might get 30. Making it look too easy out there. Great job by Tyson and the Hornets to get into the lane. Trey Jefferson, 28 points and a career high tonight, Akil. Career, career night for Trey Jefferson. You know, he's only a freshman, a red shirt freshman. You know, technically a freshman because he didn't play last year, but you got to love his first, his tournament debut. 28 points. He wants it. And you can see he wants to look at the replay right here. Marvin Jones backing down his defender, passing around, swinging around the, the perimeter. And Zach Lofton throwing it off for Marvin Jones. That's my play of the game. Trey Jefferson right now holding the ball by the Texas sign midcourt. Almost had a pick. Loses defender. This is the play we got crazy on. Step back, free throw shot from Trey Jefferson. And here we go, another replay right here from Meshack's angle, sizing up his defender. Sizing him up, sizing him up. Taking for the easy layup with the left hand. That was his last bucket to put him at 28 points. He's playing at, he's playing lights out. Lights out for a point guard. And want to see him go in the semifinal, see what he ha what happens in the Toyota Center come Friday. Eighty-two to sixty-nine. The Tigers lead it by thirteen. Kevin Scott trying to get the ball to Marvin Jones as he gets it to Jelani Robinson. And Michael Tyson actually fouls Marvin Jones, and that's really not the guy you want to put on a free throw line. Not right now. He's shooting good at the free throw line, seven for nine, going for free throws number 10 and 11. So you got to love the performance from the free throw line with Marvin Jones. It is, yeah, right now you're down 13 points, 57 seconds. Look, don't know what can happen right now, but don't want to put a guy like Marvin Jones at the free throw line. Marvin Jones knocks down the first. Marvin Jones knocks down the second. Here's Thomas. Bucket. Quick timeout by Alabama State. Still showing heart. As they're not giving up just yet. It's a long ride back to Montgomery. <laughs> they say they want to book a, they can book a hotel room here tonight. <laughs> hey, you know, it, not bad staying in the fourth largest city in America in Houston. So, I mean, I don't blame them at all. If you lose tonight, hey, you're the AC, you had a good match. You're down 12, 49 seconds love. Hey, you want to have an extra night? Come on, you, go. you got double tree, you have the W, you have, the w, you have a loft. You have Hotel Zaza. There's a lot of hotels you can oh, stay wow. in. 
a lot of wow. hotels. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. my, my brother has a lot of Star Wars points. Not oh, okay. me. That, that's him. That's him. He know all the luxurious hotels in the city of Houston. But hey, if they want to stay extra night, they can. But all seriousness, though, you love to play from Total Law Thomas the senior, 17 points in this game. They're just showing a lot of heart right now. You can't blame Alabama State for still trying to show some light. A lot of fans here at Texas Southern getting into it. Tiger fans hanging out tonight. It's going to be a party on the Tiger Walk. You got any SWAC updates for us? SWAC updates right now with six minutes left in the game. Southern is up two against Jackson State, 50 to 48. And Grambling is up to Prairie View, which I predicted Grambling could win this game on the road against Prairie View with seven minutes and 52 seconds left in the game. And as you, if you're just not joining us, Alcorn State defeated Valley State 63 to 60 in a, in a nail biter. I really like the way, I really like Valley's chances. I'm really proud that they actually made it into the tournament. As Terrence LaFleur fouls Delaney Robinson. Was that a, a, a quarterback pass from Kevin Scott? <laughs> that yeah. was a nice bullet. I'm looking at Coach Haywood in the stands a little early. I hope he's got an eye out for his backup quarterback possibly next, oh my this season. You I see, know he's going to miss spring practice. but <laughs> Yeah, but, hey, Kevin Scott, you seen that bullet? Like he ran, like the line Robinson ran a little a, a post route going in, a little in route. Kevin Scott hit him right on the money. 85 to 72 as Delaney Robinson knocks down another free throw. Make it two free throws. 86 to 72. Tigers lead it by 14. No foul here, Tigers, no foul. Here's LaFleur with the reverse. And Marvin Jones comes away with it. Foul goes to number 25, Michael Tyson, his fourth. Marvin Jones. Marvin Jones all the way from Chicago, Illinois. Your place, your city. Me and Marvin Jones city. <laughs> there you go. Shot clock is turned off. Here come the Hornets. Thomas. No good. Oh, and Trey Jefferson was wide open. I thought Trey was going to put it up for the slam. Tigers will hold on to it. Tigers take it. 87 to 72. And the Fighting Tigers of Texas Southern and the Lady Tigers of Texas Southern will head downtown to Houston, Texas to play inside the Toyota Center again on Friday. On Friday, it's going to be a heck of a matchup. Start off with the Lady Tigers going against the Lady Hornets. A bunch of storylines, but the story I'm, I'm looking at as many other shoes. Brittany Wright wins player of the year. A lot of people think Joyce Kinnison should have won it. How would Joyce Kinnison respond to the people saying that she, she should have won? And as for Brittany Wright as well, winning back-to-back -back player of the year awards. And as for the men, as they wait, the winner of Jackson State and Southern in that matchup. So, this is kind of, you know, a good one. And let's look at the replay right now. Trey Jefferson off the pick, passing around the perimeter, passing down to Marvin Jones. Body up, Warnock. Like I said, barbecue chicken, too easy. Nice jump shot, and one of 20 points for Marvin Jones. And as we go down the court, Jenna McLeod open the alley for Kevin Scott, slamming it down home in front of his home car, the HP Arena. And as Kevin Scott takes the ball out, you see Zach Lawson, his man playing one-on-one, full-court man defense. Takes the ball down the court, finds Marvin Jones for another alley-oop. His second of 20 points in this game. And find Marvin Jones again on that left block like he likes it. Pass it back down to the perimeter. They swing around McLeod to Lawson to Marvin Jones for the alley-oop. His third alley-oop of the game. And Trey Jefferson by the Texas logo, mid-court. 
sizing up his man. Then take the pick. Loses this man. The play we got crazy on. Shoots down the free, free throw shot. Nice fade away from Trey Jefferson, one of his 28 points in the game. Trey Jefferson right here, sizing up his man. No, nah, you can't hold me. That's what he's saying. Nope, I'm playing with you. Going with the left hand. He not even left hand. He went with the left hand layup. Silky smooth. 28 points for Trey Jefferson. Great game overall for the Tigers as they defeat the Hornets of Alabama State. Tigers get the first round victory over the Alabama State Hornets. Bail hands to the Toyota Center. Mike Davis with the smooth smile. <laughs> Coach Mike Davis. That's a stand right there. <laughs> I guess that's part of his swagger. You know, but hey, you're Coach Mike Davis. He, he earned the paper. He can stand however he wants to. He's earned it. He's earned it. Head coach Mike Davis gets back into the SWAC tournament, wins his first round matchup. And for Friday night, a lot to look at. You know, he's got options, he can start. He's got three different starting lineups. You know, one thing about Mike Davis is he's gonna put his best five on the court at all times. He will, and him. he has the, he learned, you see right now, Dulon Robinson can't play in the tournament because this game right now he had, we never seen Dulani Robinson, Dulan Robinson have this much impact in a conference game in a while. And for him to come out like this in the quarterfinals, his first game, so as any, many of the players on his team, great performance overall from Dulani Robinson. Finishing out the game with six points, but wreaked havoc on the user side with three steals. The alma mater. We're still on. <laughs> We're still on. As the fans celebrate here inside the H&P, Demontre Jefferson heads over to do his radio deal. And we got Stretch. Stretch, player of the game, Marvin Jones. Let's see what he has to say. Here with Maroon. Here with Maroon and Gray, player of the game. Texas Southern University center Marvin Jones, double-double tonight, 20 points, 10 rebounds, but the stat I'm impressed with, five for five from the field. Talk about your performance today, Marvin. Man, I, I really wasn't too focused on points or anything like that. Coach Neal was just harping on the rebounds. They, they had 15 offensive rebounds at half, so I wasn't really paying attention to my individual performance. I was just trying to come out and help my team win. Always your, always your performance are always welcome, always well, always grateful for your performances. Ten rebounds, just as you were talking about. Two blocks, and of course you just won the Swag Defensive Player of the Year. Talk about that award a little bit. Oh man, it's a, it's a beautiful accomplishment, man. Just to be able to get some recognition. It's a blessing to be able to do it for my team, for my family, for the school, for the legacy. It's just, it's just an unbelievable feeling just to get it. So I'm proud of myself, and I'm just trying to keep going. Marvin Jones, 
AKA Stretch. Akil calls you Stretch. He gave you that nickname. <laughs> Semifinals against Friday. We haven't determined who the opponent is yet. But what are your thoughts just going into that game, the next big game? Man, honestly, I'm just going to I'm gonna listen to Coach and listen to the coaching staff each and every day. Come in to practice, locked in, what they tell me to do, and I'm going to execute from there. I just go in and just try to play my hardest for the team. Guys, Marvin Jones, Shot Town's finest. Double double tonight, 20 points, 10 rebounds. He's our Maroon and Great player of the game. Marvin, congratulations, man. Thank you. Nice, man. Hey, I'm sorry I got to do that. I want to give a shout out to my mom because she wasn't able to come out to a game. Hey, mom, I love you. Gotta love the mamas. Nick and Akil, I'll have Mike Davis in just a second. Back to you guys. Got Mike Davis right in a second. Yeah, Coach Mike Davis getting ready to step in. He wanted to shout out his mom. Hi, mom. Hey, man, <laughs> that's wrong with that. Let's go back to head coach Mike Davis and Marcus Smith. Southern head coach Mike Davis. Coach, slow starting in the first half, but you guys, you got your guys to rebound. How big is that going to be going down the stretch in the SWAC tournament? Well, we got to start playing like it's a playoff game. You know, when you get into the tournament, everybody plays at a different level, and we just never turn our level up on the uh, defensive rebounds. And they end up getting like 25 offensive rebounds against us. Coach, I hear you often reiterating to the team, this is swag tournament time. We're one and done. Loser goes home. Has that gotten to the minds of the players? I mean, we saw it later in the second half, but do you really think it's really reconciling with the players? I'm not sure because I still look out and see the same things. As you watch college basketball around the country, you see people playing at a different level of intensity, giving great effort and a lot of toughness. And we got the talent. We just got to get to that point to where we're playing with alertness, toughness, and effort. And like I was telling Marvin, our player of the game, we haven't determined who's going to be the opponent on Friday, but what are you looking forward to going to that semifinals matchup at the Toyota Center? It's going to be a war. We can't come out like we did last year over there, get down 26 points and try to make a run. We got to play every possession. Well, Coach, you have the rest of this week to get back at it, get there in practice, and we hope to see some of the same luck that we had tonight. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Nick and Akil, back to you guys. We'll have Trey Jefferson just maybe, but until then, back to you guys. A great job there by Marcus Smith on the sideline hanging out. Marcus Smith getting the head coach, Mike Davis. You know, he just talked about last year going into the SWAG tournament, actually, at Toyota Center. You know, you get down by Southern by 26 points, then you try to make a run. You got to come out playing on top at all times inside the tournament. I know it's tournament time. You have last-second shot buzzer beaters, but that's where you really don't want to be in March. You don't want to be down 20-plus points like they did last year. And you got to give credit to the Southern team last year because they was great. And... One of the reasons why they was down so much to Southern and eventually lost that game was due to guard play. The last three, four games of the season, you, you had a little bit of cause concern with the guard play of TSU. But this year, if Southern can hold on the lead against Jackson State, as they do right now, they're up five with three minutes left in the game, they might see Southern again in a rematch in the semifinals in the same place on a Friday night. So in the guard play, you have to be confident right now with TSU going forward. Well, I definitely like the thoughts. Alabama State, subpar year. At least they got into the SWAG tournament this year. They were able to at least give themselves a chance. Head coach Lewis Jackson, I'm sure he'll be back next year. He's always got something in the tank down there in Montgomery. Oh, yeah, it's most definitely. They lost by 15, but you have to give them credit. You have to give them credit because they finished the game off with three, four players in double figures. 17 for Tola Thomas, the senior. Corvon Buller finished the game off with 12. Amir Warner finished the game off with 10 and had a big fact, a big presence in that first half. That was due to the reason why they was in the game in the first half going into halftime. And 11 points from, Mike, from Michael Tom Tyson. So give credit to Alabama State being an AC under 500 in the season, but had a good season overall getting to the tournament. As we'll hear from point guard Trey Jefferson, the redshirt freshman from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We'll hear from him. And I like to hear what he has to say. I mean, he kind of just took this game into his hands and just kind of played above above all levels tonight. And yeah. he just did what he had to do. Yeah, 28 points, man. That's that is that's great. You know, for his playoff, for his tournament debut as a freshman, you got to give credit to Trey Jefferson. He came out like he'd been here before. You know, he looked at this game like it's none other. And now Mark Smith do have Trey Jefferson. Let's go to him. Before they turn the lights out on us, I wanted to get a chance to interview Trey Jefferson. Trey, career high, 28 points in your collegiate, your young collegiate year so far. Describe your performance today. Uh, just give give everything my team needed. Once I seen Zach Lofton's shots wasn't falling and he wasn't getting the calls he was supposed to get, 
and uh, Jalen McLeod wasn't getting his calls he was supposed to get and getting the shots he was supposed to get. I just uh, stepped up and knocked down shots that they uh, my team found for me and knocked down free throws tonight. The big stat that stands out to me is the turnover stat. Zero turnovers tonight. You, find, you're, you can obviously say that you're finding your niche out there and it's becoming easier for you as a point guard. Yeah, it's just uh, grooming on me. The game grooming, my pace coming back, sitting out a year. Well, actually a year and a half, so uh, it was just about getting my pace back, getting my win and finding my rhythm and getting into the shots I make, taking the comfortable shots instead of the shots I thought was comfortable. So I'm now late, 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 late in this season, it's more mentally than uh, earlier. It was just more me, of me playing. And then my final question, we have to acknowledge you as a SWAC freshman of the year. We're just talking about winning that award, how much that means to you. Uh, I really haven't, I ain't bring it in yet because we still got business to take care of, but all the um, thank yous and appreciations and the well deserves that everybody is supporting me. Thank you all for all that, but I ain't really bring it in yet because it's still a task at hand. Still a task at hand. SWAC tournament continues at the Toyota Center on Friday, March 10th. We haven't decided, we haven't figured out, determined who the opponent's going to be, but any thoughts going into that game? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That's all we have from here. Trey Jefferson, our player of the game, career high, 28 points. Nick and Akil, back to you guys. The phrase of the night is, it doesn't matter because you must play and you must win the contest. Akil, your final thoughts. Great play overall. Great play from Trey Jefferson, 28 points. And big man Marvin Jones, a.k.a. Stretch, coming in again. The guys that won the awards this season came out and showed the reason why. They was defensive player of the year from Marvin Jones and – freshman of the year from Trey Jefferson. Like to say thank you for wrapping the season up with you, Akia Williams. All right, got my cameraman right here on each side hanging out with us. Our executive producer, Jeremy Tillis in the back, the whole TSU Sports Network production crew, and our sideline reporter, Marcus Smith. Thank you for joining us inside this season at home inside the H&P Arena. We'll see you next year right here on the TSU Sports Network.